let me introduce Fergus, the great bustard, and when it comes to birds, none are finer than these. He is from the Great Bustard Trust and now he's enjoying this fabulous new aviary at the Hawk Conservancy near Wayhill. And here lots of people are going to be able to see them because of all of his size and his bravado in the wild, Great Bustards are devils to get to see. They're terribly, terribly shy. Getting close to them is almost impossible. And the best you're going to see is a tiny spot a long way away in the distance through your telescope. So for people to have the opportunity to come here and see Fergus and Jean-Claude who's next door and is even bigger and bolshier. It's going to be absolutely fantastic to get a real sense of what bustards are about and then hopefully contribute to the project because the whole aim of this is to get these birds back into the wilds of Wiltshire. They are a native species, they were hunted out and the project's been designed to bring the birds in from Russia so they'll be free flying and breeding in Wiltshire again. And that will be something quite sensational to behold. As far as the Great Buster Group is concerned, I think this is a huge step forward for us. As I'm sure you know, we are entirely supported by voluntary contribution, and that means publicity. So this is about a cooperation between two conservation efforts in the same community. And community conservation is very much the most sustainable way forward. Why do you think bustards attract so much interest? Well. For those of us from this part of the country, of course, they are a part of the history. Wiltshire and Salisbury Plain in particular was the last stronghold when there were wild bustards in Great Britain. They died out in about 1830 and Salisbury Plain was the last real home for them. They've been a part of the history of Wiltshire, although they were much more widespread than that, but Wiltshire they were always uh, a major item. And uh, those of us living down here, quite apart from the fact that they are simply splendid birds, have a sort of historical attachment to them, and so we're particularly keen to have back on the plain in Salisbury a bird that was really um, symptomatic of Salisbury in the old days. When we started the group, uh, we hoped for a survival rate of somewhere between 10% up to best scenario would have been 25%. We've got about 15, we've released 86, that's around 20%, and uh, that's nearer the um, best possible scenario than it is the unviable stage. So we're encouraged by what's been achieved. We should uh, this year or next year have males in that, in that category, and we hope that the hens will continue to uh, uh, in, attempt to nest and be successful and produce homegrown wild busters on the plane. The other thing is that um, now that we have a small colony, th there are adult birds on the plane for our young released birds to link up with. In the early stages of this project, the problem was that we were releasing young birds on the plane and there were no adults around. The f adults from our first few years dispersed across the country and initially didn't come back to the plane. Now you've got adults out there, the young birds have got tutors as it were. Absolutely, absolutely, and we're hopeful that the survival rate will increase substantially. We've, so we've got about 30% of last year's birds. Our hope is that that survival rate will, Im will continue to improve as we have more mature birds on the plane to teach them the way. And what would it mean to you to see uh, a, a homegrown great bustard on the plains of Wiltshire? I can't wait, Chris. I can't wait. And if a visitor came to the, the conservancy here and gets to see a bustard up close, as they will now, um, and is enamoured with it, what, what can they do to contribute to the project's future success? Well, they can visit the project site if they would like to, and there they will see birds uh, in the release pen. But most importantly, they can contribute money. I'm afraid that's what it is. It's a very expensive process. All of us here would love to see more great bustards back on the plane and the bustards coming here to the Hawk Conservancy uh, means it can help showcase the project. We're very lucky that Karen, who cares for the bustards, one of the founder of the project, um, she's all but moved in um, and so she's here every day and she has two of our members of staff assigned to her um, to learn about the sort of the daily care of the bustard. I hope that we'll have a long and prosperous working relationship together. I hope that it'll showcase the project for the Great Bustard Group and uh, lots of visitors will come and see the Bustard and that can only be good for the project on Salisbury Plain. And have you seen the Bustards out in the wild yourself? On Thursday evening I was driving to Stonehenge and two Great Bustards flew over the top of Stonehenge and it probably made my year. Now, I've been lucky enough to see these birds in the wild, not in the UK of course, but in Spain and in Hungary, and it was a real tough job to see them. Now, 
I can roll up here at the Hawk Conservancy, come in and stand just a couple of metres away from what is certainly one of the most impressive birds in Europe, if not the world. These are going to be great ambassadors here for the Bustard Trust, so it's fingers crossed that they generate enough support to keep the project running so that in the end we can look beyond the boundary of the Hawk Conservancy and see these birds flying in the wilds of Wiltshire. Now that would be a great conservation success.